Wednesdays with Karen. Yes, I am back and it took me quite some time to come back after having COVID and I'm now COVID free. Actually, to be honest, I lost my momentum after having COVID because my body had to recover. You know, sometimes, not sometimes, it really takes months for your body to recover after having COVID. And I also got busy with work and I did other things. But then, I had a lot of people messaging me, why are you not continuing your vlogs anymore? I miss your voice and I miss your content. And that's also one of the things that made me come back in doing my vlog once again. And I also went back. Why did I do my vlog in the first place? It's because I want to share the things that I've learned to people. Practically, it's helping other people during this quarantine season. And we're still in the house, so I still want to continue doing my vlogs. Okay, today's topic is all about traveling. Traveling? Bakit nga ba traveling? Kasi I know that a lot of people are still in their houses and dreaming of traveling once again, pero hindi pa kasi pwede. It's better for you to stay in your houses because it's still not safe for you to travel. One day, you can travel again. So, on this episode, I am going to share to you my Miss Earth travel. So, that you know, you will have glitz and glam with your travels, but I'm also going to share to you the things that I've never shared in public before. What are the things that I encountered when I was traveling during Miss Earth? I lost my luggages, I got stuck in the immigration, I missed my connecting flights, and so on. I'm going to share to you my experiences here exclusively on this vlog. So for today's episode, I am going to share my unforgettable experiences when I travel, valuable lessons, places for you to visit per country that I went to, and of course, travel tips that I can share with you. A lot of people don't know about this in Miss Earth. When you win, you have the privilege of traveling because you are going to be invited by a lot of countries. But people don't know how we travel. So we have two choices. Either you choose to travel with a chaperone from the organization or you can travel with one of your elemental queens per country that you're going to go to. So it's like you sharing the experience with your elemental queens. And most of I believe all or most of the winners always choose the second one because we want to share our experience with our elemental queens in the countries we're going to go to. I believe this is also the only organization which allows their runners-up to join and travel with the international winner. So I'm actually happy with my organization because I get to share this experience with my elemental queens. Let me start now with travel tips before I go to the countries that I went to. Number one is to always have your portable Wi-Fi with you. Why? Because there are other airports out there that has very very weak internet. And personally for me, I need the internet every time I travel because I contact the people I have to contact in another country or the country of my destination through different apps like WhatsApp or Messenger or Viber. So I need my internet. Especially kapag may kailangan ka search about places and so on. So you need your internet. Second, always keep your passport in a safe place. Kapag nagka-travel ka, your passport is the most important thing you always carry with you. Mawala na lahat. Huwag lang ang passport mo. Trust me, don't ever lose your passport. Because if you actually lose your passport, you have to go to the Philippine Embassy just to fix that and super hustle. And hindi ka na makakapag-enjoy kasi syempre, you're, you're anxious. How can you go back to your country? Third one, always keep your plane ticket safe. Because there are a lot of people who lose their plane ticket. And once you lose your plane ticket, you cannot get on board on the airplane. What happens is that a lot of people lose their ticket during the x-ray of the items. Because everything is put on the x-ray box or on the basket before you put it on an x-ray. And sometimes, mali yung makukuha ng taong kalikod mo o kaharap mo, tapos makukuha nila yung ticket mo. So please, be very, very careful. Always keep your plane ticket safe as well. The next one, if you travel, it's important for you to always have US dollars. Because no matter where you go, it's accepted. That currency is accepted. And it's always better that you have a small dollar bill. 
hindi pwedeng laging $100. Because I'm going to share to you, I had some experiences in which masyadong malaki yung $100 bill, wala silang pang sukli. So, most probably, they're not going to accept your $100 bill. So, it's important for you to always have small dollar bills as well. The last one is be mindful of your things at all times. Kailangan alam mo kung saan siya nakalagay and be careful with the people that you also mingle with. Because there are different cases in which other people would put things in your bag, so please be careful. There are times that you would misplace your other things as well, so please be careful. Always be mindful with your things at all times. Okay, now let's go to the first country I traveled. I went to Cambodia. I traveled to Cambodia only a month after I won Miss Earth. And that is very, very rare. Usually in Miss Earth, when you win, um, it takes months for you to have your travels. And for me, it, it only took me one month, I already traveled. And the good part when I traveled was that I traveled with all of my elemental queens. That is Nina from Australia, Lada from Russia, and of course, Juliana from Colombia. This seldom happens. Um, in Miss Earth, usually, um, what happens is that the winner only travels with one elemental queen per country. But this time, we were very fortunate enough to travel as a whole. All of us were able to travel in one country. And it happened a very short time after winning as well. So we were very blessed and very fortunate. In Cambodia, there's a lot of Filipinos there. You would feel like it's as if you're still in the Philippines. Good <laughs> For my unforgettable experiences in Cambodia, the first one is very, very special to me because that's the first country I traveled to. At the same time, I was able to travel with all of my elemental queens and we were all complete. That very seldom happens in Miss Earth. At the same time, we also traveled after a very short time after winning. Also, a very seldom thing to happen in Miss Earth and both of those things happen to us. The next one is the hospitality that we experienced in Cambodia. I personally loved the hospitality that they showed us and it felt like we were in the Philippines. I guess it's because ang dami ding Pinoy doon and Filipinos are very known with their hospitality and a lot of people experience that when they visit the Philippines and I'm actually happy to also show the people that our hospitality is very much known to everyone around the world. The next one, the food was amazing. I was able to eat a pizza lobster there with a real lobster on top of a pizza. The sweets, also the super cute dumplings. It's as if it's just so cute and you just don't want to eat it. There were dumplings that looked like swans and all that and you didn't want to eat it anymore because you were just so cute. But when I ate it, it was also good. <laughs> And for the valuable lessons that I had in my first country that I visited, I learned to cherish every moment. Because I didn't know when I was going to see my elemental queens after we travel that first country. When they go back to their own countries, I don't know if we will still have our next reunion for us to see each other again and to bond as well. Second thing I've learned, treat everyone equally. All of you are equal and all of you are winners. It doesn't mean that because I won the title, it means I'm better than them. That's not true. I learned that all of us are equal and all of us have the same things for us to experience. And I experienced that in my first country that I visited. And this is also important. Always be on time. When you are given a schedule, let's say, okay, let's, let's meet up at 9 a.m. Be there at 9 a.m. Don't let the whole team wait for you because your time are all important and you have to stick to the schedule. No matter what happens, always be on time. And the place for you to visit in Cambodia, you can go around the capital city. That is Phnom Phen. You can see a lot of things there and you can go around. At the same time, you have to go to Angkor Wat. That amazed me, to be honest, because I believe that we were told that how they made the temples, they made it by hands. Those huge rocks were carried and were put together by hand. And it's just amazing how history really jumps out of the books 
when you see it in front of your eyes. And that's what I really love about traveling. You know, it's not just within the book. I can see it before my eyes. You need to have a guide when you go to Angkor Wat because it's so big. You have to walk from east to west and you can get lost inside because it all looks the same. But I really appreciated the history and everything I saw there. At the same time, you have to be careful because there were monkeys all around in the temple. And I could still remember what they told us is that do not look at the monkeys in the eyes because if you do, they might attack you. So we never looked at the monkey in the eyes and you're not allowed to feed them. Now let's go to the next country I visited. I went to Vietnam. I went to the capital of Vietnam and that's Hanoi. And I went with Tita Lorraine Cho. It was very special to me because that was the first time I'm going to travel with her. For my unforgettable experiences, this was the country I traveled with no sleep. Because when I left the Philippines, I went from Boracay to Manila to Manila and then going to Vietnam because I had an event in Boracay and then I wasn't able to sleep because I had to be in the airport by 1 a.m. because we had the first flight. Can, can you imagine? I didn't have any sleep. And what happened was that when I landed in Vietnam, it was work. You don't have time much to rest because you have to go there to work and to do the things that you have to do for Miss Earth. So that's what I did. I couldn't believe that I was awake for more than 24 hours. I don't know where I got the energy because I don't even drink coffee. I'm the type of person who cannot drink coffee because my body can't take caffeine. So yeah, I could still remember that I was awake more than 24 hours and when I was about to sleep, I couldn't sleep in a minute. <laughs> I, I couldn't sleep a god and it was I was having a hard time that time. But I was able to rest after the event and I was able to have my sleep. Beauty sleep is not very much applicable with beauty queens. When they say that, you know, you have to have your beauty rest, the truth is we are team hashtag no sleep. Especially when you're raining, you are going to do a lot of things and there are times that you don't sleep anymore. That's how busy you are. So I just want to rid up that fact that when they say beauty queens have beauty sleep, um, that's not true. <laughs> Because usually when you're raining, you don't have much sleep. When I went to Vietnam, that was also the time I had a shoot with Harper's Bazaar Vietnam, F Fashion Vietnam, and Her World Vietnam. The valuable lesson I learned in Vietnam? Be ready to learn and to observe carefully. You know why? Because to be honest, I never traveled on my own. And this time, I had to learn because I chose the second option. Remember when I told you earlier, I chose to travel with one of my elemental queens. And Tita Lorraine was already teaching me how to travel because I chose that choice. And I never traveled by myself before because I was always dependent on my friends or family members. So kapag sinabi nilang, gate 3, lahat kami pupunta ng gate 3. Tagasunod lang ako. So hindi ko talaga alam papano saan yung gate 3, papano ako pupunta ng gate 3, ano yung flight, saan ako titingin para makita ko yung flight. Ganon ko hindi alam paano mag-travel by myself because I was completely dependent on other people. And I learned in this experience, I have to learn. <laughs> but you know, in this organization in Mr. I'm very proud to say that we're always protected. When we travel from the airplane, to the country of destination, you will have an entourage waiting for you in the country of your destination. You're not going to bring out any penny. You're not going to travel by yourself when you're already in the country of destination. We are just going to travel by ourselves in the airplane, but then there are people waiting for us to support us and to give us everything that we need. And it's great because, you know, being a winner in Miss Earth and getting the privilege to travel you're also getting paid to travel, which is great, diba? Parang lahat ng perks of a winner that's already here. The places for you to visit in Vietnam, you can go to Hanoi and explore. At the same time, you can also go to Ho Chi Minh and explore. There are so many things to see in Vietnam. Okay, the third country that I went to was Mexico. I was really excited to travel to Mexico because I was going to travel with Juliana. She's my Miss Earth Colombia. 
and she was the one who traveled to Mexico with me because she's the nearest to Mexico because Colombia is really near to that country. I was so happy because I got to see her again. You know, honestly, she was my closest in the competition. And it's true that you can gain a sister and a family, even though it's a competition. I was excited to go to Mexico because I was so excited to eat their food because I know that Mexican food are so good. My unforgettable experience in Mexico is that I gained another family in Mexico. I love the organization in Mexico. Karen, she was my Miss Earth Mexico, and Paul and Irma, they were great people. And they really welcomed me and embraced me with, with so many things, you know. I love that country because I've met great people as well. And I have another unforgettable experience going to Mexico. You have to listen to this. Remember when I told you that you need to always have a smaller bill of US dollars when you travel? This is what happened when I went to Mexico. You know when your parents say that don't talk to strangers? That's actually true at some point, but sometimes you need to open up and be open as well with strangers because sometimes even strangers can help you during your time of need. So you just have to be discerning. When I landed to Mexico City, I had another flight because I'm supposed to go to Manzanillo. That is a country or the place of destination in Mexico. So when I was in Mexico City, I was so hungry. I wanted to eat and in my bag, I misplaced my credit card. Don't ever do that. That was my fault and I learned the hard way. So please do not lose your credit card when you're traveling. Well, to be honest, I just misplaced it. So I wanted to buy food. I was going to use my credit card, but since I didn't get to see my credit card because I misplaced it, I took out my US dollar bill. But I don't have a small US dollar bill. I have $100 bill. I went to this coffee shop because I wanted to eat a sandwich and a water. So what happened was that the person did not accept my $100 bill because they don't have enough change to give me. That's why I couldn't buy the food that I wanted. I couldn't buy anything. The person behind me, he was a total stranger because I couldn't pay for it. I was returning the food already because they don't have any change. That person paid for my food. Out of the blue, he paid for my food. And I was asking, how can I repay him back? He said, no need. And he said that you're just visiting my country. It's okay. See, there are actually good people out there, even though they're strangers. You just have to be very discerning. You cannot completely close your doors on strangers because there are people who also can help you that are strangers. Just like my experience. The valuable lesson I learned when I was in Mexico, don't shut everyone off. Like how I explained with the stranger. He actually was the one who paid for my food and drink because I was just completely hungry. But he was the one who extended his help even though he didn't know who I was and paid completely for my food without anything in return. The places for you to visit when you go to Mexico is a Grand Isla Navidad Resort in Manzanillo, Mexico. I could still remember of having the perks, being in that resort, of eating whatever I want in whatever restaurant. There were fine dining, there were different kind of food, there were things that you can do and you are free to eat and do whatever you want. That's the perks I had when I was in Mexico, and it was amazing. The next country I traveled was Reunion Island. Reunion Island is a colony of France, but it's 12 hours away from France by air. So it's very, very far. It's actually near Africa already. In my case, I went from Mexico straight to Reunion Island because my schedules were just so tight. And I believe nobody ever traveled from one country to Reunion Island. It only happened in my case because my schedules were just so tight and I didn't have any time to go back to the Philippines to do everything that I had to do because the schedules were just clashing together. If I could still remember, I believe I had five flights from Mexico to Reunion Island because it's completely far from each other and that was the only flight available to connect from Mexico to Reunion Island. There's no straight flight. So they had to find flights that are connecting with each other just for me to go to Reunion Island. Reunion Island is so beautiful. It's not that big, but it's a country where it's surrounded by mountains. 
So the city is within the mountains and it's completely covered by water around, just like the Philippines. It's also surrounded by volcanoes. Yes, by volcanoes. <laughs> For my unforgettable experience in Reunion Island, the first one is I got stuck in the immigration of France. I am not kidding. I got stuck. Like, hindi ako pinalabas ng immigration. And I was so shocked with what happened. Because if you're going to travel in Europe, you need to have your Schengen visa. But your Schengen visa is applicable with European Union countries. But this Reunion Island is not a part of the EU. So I had a different Schengen visa specifically for Reunion Island. But my flight that was given to me had to pass through France in order for me to go to Reunion Island. So what happened was that when I went to France, the immigration officer stopped me and I got stuck in the immigration because my Shenzhen visa is not a part of the whole Europe. It was only for Reunion Island. So my luggage passed through, but I got stuck. Can you imagine I got stuck in the immigration and the airport staff guided me where I was supposed to go to because I can't pass through the immigration. I had to go to another terminal outside going around not through the immigration. That's what happened to me. But you know what? I was very grateful because the European airport staff were very polite. They actually guided me. I even rode their airport cars and they actually guided me respectfully to the place and terminal that I had to go to for me to go to the flight that I needed to Reunion Island. To be honest, because of the hustle and everything that happened to the immigration, I was supposed to miss my flight to Reunion Island from France because it was a long process that I had to go through for me to go from one terminal to another because they didn't allow me to pass through the immigration. But you know what? What I really am grateful and my unforgettable experience, the staff in the airline made a way for me to still be on the flight to Reunion Island. Remind you, that's 12 hours away from France. So that's a long flight. Can you imagine if I missed that flight? They had to get me another ticket just for me to go to Reunion Island. But the staff really made a way for me to get into the flight. And after that, the flight attendants in the airplane that I got into knew that I was Miss Earth. And they actually gave me an upgraded seat. So it was so cool because that was a 12 hour flight and they gave me a better seat for me to be able to rest in that long hour flight. So I was so grateful even though that happened. I experienced so many great people even though I don't know them. And they were people not of my nationality but still they helped me. One thing that I can tell you with my unforgettable experience, remember that my luggage passed through the immigration in France but I got stuck. In short, I didn't have my luggage in the airplane. My luggage got stuck in France. So I lost my luggage for four days because in France, um, during that time, I had to check in, check out again. So I had to get my luggage from the carousel. But because I wasn't able to pass through the immigration, I didn't get my luggage in the carousel. So I lost my luggage for four days. Can you imagine? All my clothes, my makeup, my medicine were in my luggage. So I didn't have it for four days. But you know what? When I landed to Reunion Island, when the national director learned what happened to me, he was very sorry and he apologized to me because he didn't know it was going to happen. It was the first time that he booked it that way. I was the only winner who went from another country to Reunion Island. So he really apologized because he didn't mean to do it and he didn't know that was going to happen. It was something for us to learn and I was still grateful. I was still grateful because they were good people. Because I didn't have my luggage with me, I don't have anything, they actually bought clothes for me and they bought makeup. And they also bought me luxury makeup from Dior to Chanel. Everything that I needed, they provided for me. The valuable lessons I've learned in Reunion Island don't ruin your day if it doesn't happen according to plan. Like what happened to me, there were so many stops. But in the end, I was actually blessed with more even though that happened to me. If my luggage didn't get lost, I wouldn't have luxury makeup and I wouldn't have new clothes with me. <laughs> so that's what happened. At the same time, I get to experience how polite 
and very cooperative and hospitable, other people were as well in other countries. So it's not just in the Philippines, it's also people all around the world. So it's great because I get to experience that, even though I was alone. When people say everything happens for a reason, that's true. You can take my experience for that. The places for you to visit or to do in Reunion Island, you have to try riding their small planes. I believe it's a it's a plane where only has two seaters because they're going to fly you on top of Reunion Island and you're going to see the whole beautiful island. And I was able to ride that and to experience the beauty of the whole island. And it was so breathtaking and I would love to do it again. It was really beautiful. But you know, even though I was afraid of heights, I really enjoyed on top seeing all those views. <laughs> the second one you have to go to is the Volcano Museum. Since Reunion Island has a lot of volcanoes, they also have museum for volcanoes. So you would know how they erupt or what happens underground and how to protect yourself and so on. I actually enjoyed it. Not being a nerd and all, but I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in on this episode. Please don't forget to watch out for the next episode because it is going to be the continuation of the travels I had with Miss Earth. It's too long because so I had to cut it on this episode. But I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something from me. Once again, thank you so much for watching Wednesdays with Karen. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell button beside it. Also, don't forget to follow me on my social media pages. That is on my Instagram and on my Facebook page. Till the next episode, bye guys!